Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial of how to make a maxi kimono or dashiki gown with side pockets and a slit neckline with a bold placket. I have 6 meters of fabric but I'll be using 3 meters for this gown. Here my 3 meters is folded into 2 which gives me a meter and 18 inches which is equivalent to the length of my gown plus seam allowance. My fabric is folded into 4 towards the selvage. My fabric is folded into 4 at 17 inches, half of my shoulder measurement plus sleeve length plus half inch seam allowance. This line will serve as my start line. On this line, I'll take our neck measurement. For the front neck line, I marked 3 inches for the length and 3 inches for the depth. For the back neck line, I marked 3 inches for the length and 1 inch for the depth. From the center fold, I mark half of my shoulder measurement plus the sleeve length plus half inch seam allowance. I will take this measurement down to enable me mark a straight line for my sleeve. On the shoulder line, I went down 1.75 inches or 2 inches if you prefer and I'll connect that point back to the neckline. On the neckline, I went in by 0.5 inch and connect the 1.75 inches to it. If you do this, you will not have any pointy corners on your neckline and this is what your neckline will look like in the overlay. The lines highlighted by the red line becomes your new neckline. My sleeve opening is 15 inches, half of that is 7.5 plus half inch seam allowance. Now I'm marking my horizontal measurements, the half length which is 16, the hip level 24 inches and the full length of the gown 52 inches. I'll go ahead and square out these lines. I'll mark the hip measurements but I will not be using it just for reference and for my client is 40 inches divided by 4 is 10. On the sleeve, I will come in by 1 inch plus half inch seam allowance. At the hem of the gown, I marked 1 quarter of the hip measurement plus 2 inches. This was okay for my client because she is small but you can mark up to 3 to 4 inches for easy movement depending on your size. I went up 3 inches at the hem of the gown and I'll connect this line to the armhole with a slight curve. The depth of the next slit is 4 inches. I came down 9 inches for the pocket and my pocket opening is 7 inches. The seam allowance for the hem of this gown is 1.5 inches and I'll go ahead and cut out our gown. I went ahead to cut out the facing for the front and the back, the measurements are on the screen and the pockets too.
I have all my pieces cut out and interfaced, the facing for the front and for the back, the hem of our gown, and the strip of fabric for the turn up of our sleeve. And the pockets too. At this point, I decided to change the facing and cut them on bias due to the type of pattern this fabric has to give a little contrast to the front. This is the first facing I cut folding the fabric normal and this is the second one I cut on bias. I did this also for the front facing. This one is cut on bias and this other one is the old one. I have the right side of my dress facing down and the wrong side facing up. I will place the right side of the facing to the wrong side of my gown, making sure my notches match and my center line aligned. I will pin it up and I will go ahead and sew it. I prefer to attach my necklines this way before cutting it open because it gives me more control over the fabric. And I also like to outline my seam allowance so that my seams and stitches will be precise. The neckline is all sold and as you can see the stitches are precise. This is why I like to mark out my seam allowances as a guide. So I'll go ahead and make some notches on the curved area, trim off excess seam allowance and turn the facing. The first stage of the front facing is done. I'll go ahead and do the same for the back facing. I have attached the back facing. I'll go ahead and top stitch the seam allowance on the main fabric. You know our facing will be top stitch on the right side of the fabric. So I'll top stitch the seam allowance on the main fabric because we don't want any seam running on our facing. I will also do the same for the front panel, although the front panel is a little bit tricky because of the curves and the slit, but I advise that you try to do this top stitching because it helps the neckline to lay flat. I am done top stitching for the front and for the back and this is what you will have. The seams will be on the fabric and not on the facing as I'm showing you here. This is the top stitching for my front neckline. You just try and go in as much as you can because you can't top stitch around the whole neckline because it's not possible. So you just go in as much as you can and it will work. Now I'm pinning down my pockets to the all four sides to sew them, after which we will assemble the front and the back panel together. My pockets are all sewn, now I will join the back and the front dress at the shoulders first. I have pinned the shoulders together with the facing. If you sew this like this, you will have some bulkiness at the neck area because our facings are interfaced. For you to sew it like this, it will be best not to add interface to the facing. I will separate the facing and open up the seam at the neck area so that I can attach the shoulders and the facing separately first. I have opened up the seams. I will go ahead and attach the shoulders and I will do the same for the facing. Our shoulders and facing has been sewn. I will go ahead and attach them together, top stitch on it, and that's it for the neckline.
The final stage of the facing is to finish off the raw edges. I'll make sure my center lines align. I'll pin it down. I'll go in with my scissors, make some notches on the curved area to enable me fold in easily. I'll pin it down and I'll top stitch on it. Our facing has been, I keep calling this facing, this should be placket because it's sewn on the garment. Please let me know in the comment section which is correct, placket or facing. So here is a closer view of our placket, I'll go with placket from now on, it's beautifully installed, very neat. I don't know if you can see the contrast on the placket from the main fabric. This was why I decided to cut on bias to accentuate the neck area and this is the wrong side of our neckline for the sleeve I didn't just want a flat sleeve where you just fold in the fabric and stitch on it so I used the same method for the placket for the sleeve because I wanted the sleeve to be visible and add some value to the garment I mean, this dress is for an aged woman. The strip of fabric is 2.5 inches in width and 17 inches in length. I'm sewing a 0.5 inch seam allowance. I'll make some notches on the seam, trim off excess seam allowance and top stitch on the fabric. The seam allowance is what I top stitch on the fabric. When you fold over, fold it this way. This will hide the joining of your seam and will give a professional look to the sleeve of your garment. I folded over at 1.25 inches and I stitched on 0.25 inches. Our sleeves are done, I'll go ahead and stitch up our side seams and overlock it. For the finishing of the hem of our gown, I hand tacked it. Tacking, as in I tacked the hem. At this point the dress is complete, I will go ahead and give you a closer view of the dress, the finishing and reconfirm all measurements used. In case you want to make a similar dress with this type of placket, make sure the length of your front placket is up to your underbust. And that's all there is to this tutorial. If you find it helpful, please do not forget to leave me a thumbs up, share my video, 
join the family and turn on your notifications. Thank you for watching. Bisous, bisous.